Dear friends, celebrating fifth Sunday of Easter, we have these beautiful three readings. The first reading taken from the Acts of the Apostles, we find the Hellenists were troubled because the Jewish people perhaps were doing some kind of partiality towards their own people and neglecting the widows of the Hellenists. And that is why they ask for help. And the apostles have one thing in mind, that is to pray and preach and spread God's kingdom and not involve in social works. And that is why what they say, let us choose seven people full of the Holy Spirit that they may be in charge of doing the daily work of distribution of food. Whereas we will offer ourselves to praying and preaching and spread God's kingdom. Now there is this number seven and also the number twelve. The twelve number indicates the twelve tribes of Israel in the Old Testament and that's why the twelve disciples and the seven deacons were chosen. Why number seven? Because number seven was a perfect number in the Old Testament. God created the world and on the seventh day he rested. And that is why this number is indicative of so many things. Of course, in the Catholic Church we say seven sacraments. And that's why the number seven is associated with so many facts and figures in the Old Testament as well as the number 12. Now, why this particular ministry of prayer is so important in the early church? Now, we have to take a tremendous lesson from this. In the early church, if apostles were dedicated to prayer and preaching of the word of God, what about today? You know, sometimes in the church we make so many comments and they say, oh, priests must be involved in social works. There is a hue and cry in many parts of the world. Priests must be involved in the social works. Now, involving ourselves in the social work is not our mandate or not our ministry. We go back to the early church. The apostles dedicated themselves for prayer and preaching. Whereas the deacons were dedicated in their everyday distribution of food and other ministry. Dear friends, I have myself preached so many retreats, not only in my country, India, as well as in Gulf countries. You know, when we think of preaching retreat in my country, in Gulf countries, it is a big number. Here in Canada, when you preach a retreat, you will get 100 people, 200 people, maximum 300 people, or maybe 500 people. If you come to my country, when there is a retreat, you will find four to 5,000, even sometimes 6,000 people or more. So you do not have space enough in the church, and therefore you have to occupy the entire compound or hire a big space for preaching retreats. Well, that is one thing. During the retreat, what do we do? We also assign a group of people continuously pray. If the retreat is going to be for five days, 24 hours a group will continue to pray. It is not only during the day, 24 hours. Why is that? It is to strengthen, to ask the gifts of the Holy Spirit that the preaching of retreat may be successful. Now, this we have to learn in our daily lives. Dear friends, prayer is fundamental to Christianity. Look at the life of Jesus. He got up early in the morning, late in the evening. He went at night to pray to a lonely place, to the mountain, to the valley, to the garden of Gethsemane. Why Jesus had to pray? That was a very important part of his life. When we think about our lives, dear friends, we need to think that many of our troubles and problems can be solved provided we connect ourselves with God. 
In this modern world, some people think, oh, why should I pray? What do I get by praying? Is prayer just saying an Our Father, Hail Mary, or reciting rosary? Prayer is communion and communication with the divine. And that is why Jesus' ministry was powerful. And as a result, the disciples were convinced fully that they cannot involve themselves in social work. They have to do their ministry of preaching, teaching, and praying. Very often, Jesus took his disciples to a lonely place to pray, to strengthen them. We have to learn this lesson from the first Christian community. Now, second reading, Peter says very clearly that we all must be living stones to build a living temple. And Jesus is the cornerstone that was rejected, but God has put the stone in Zion. That stone will become a stumbling block to many people who do not believe, and people will stumble and fall against this stone. Now, what is this understanding of the living stone? Dear friends, we are called to build a spiritual temple, spiritual place for worshiping God. Day and night, through this spiritual temple, we may offer sacrifices to God in worship and in prayer. Now, we are all called to be the temples of the Holy Spirit. So, we are living stones. Now, this is a temple of God. This is built with stones and mud and cement. But we, spiritually, are called to build this temple. That is why spiritual life is so important that each and every one of us must build a temple for God within us and in our homes. And that becomes a living temple of God where worship is to be offered. Peter continues to say, by offering worship to God and sacrifices to God, we become a royal priesthood, a chosen race, a holy nation, God's own people. That is the ingredient of our life, that we are called to be a holy people, God's own people, royal priesthood, chosen race. That's why, dear friends, when we come to the gospel passage, we find Jesus telling us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, during the first mass, there were six little children who received first Holy Communion. And during my homily, I asked them, do you have any troubles? Told them, those who do not have troubles, please put up your hands. And there were small two kids from grade two. They did not put up their hands. And I asked them, don't you? Do you have troubles? They said, yes, we have troubles. Both of them. All of us are troubled, dear friends. All of us have troubles. Moms have their troubles. Dads have their troubles. Today we are celebrating Mother's Day. We know how much our mother did right from the beginning till the moment we could stand on our own feet. Children have their troubles. Young people have their troubles. But why Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled? Because he is going to solve our problems. And how he is going to solve our problems provided we are in communion and contact with God. That is very important. Now, in today's world, we find such a lot of young people, and I don't want to pass judgment to all young people on all young people. There are such a lot of young people who have become victims of substance abuse. We hear such a lot of stories. Why people end their life with overdose of so many terrible drugs? What is the reason? Of course, we can give many reasons. Oh, they did not have an employment. They had trouble by their friends. They had trouble from their parents, trouble from the society. 
but ultimately are we to go to end our lives because we have troubles we have to find a solution in the spirit of god that is why dear friends prayer life is so important no matter how much we insist people will not take it seriously we have to go deeper into ourselves and find that if we want to find solutions to our problems the worldly methods will help to a certain extent if i have heart trouble i will go to my doctor i will get suggestions from him i will get my medication if i am psychologically disturbed i will go to a counselor to get counseling if i have many other troubles i will go to different departments where i can solve my problems but that is not the end the real solution to our problems we can find in god provided we have that faith that's why jesus says do not let your hearts be troubled believe in god believe also in me there are many dwelling places in my father's house a direct connection to our daily life today and to the life that we are going to have you know if our life is only limited to this world then every moment we will encounter discouragement defeats but if our life is connected to another world when jesus says i am going to prepare you a place that is the continuation of this life and other life we are not discouraged because we know that even though i am defeated in this life there is going to be another life where i will be relieved and i will be elevated i will have the joy of life that's why jesus said you know the way where i am going and thomas said lord we do not know where you are going we do not know the way jesus said i am the way the truth and the life so we have to understand jesus is going to show us the way dear friends you might have visited such a lot of places in the world you know when you go to a new place what do you do you ask for a tourist guide and when you have a tourist guide you become the most lazy person ever visiting the place because you know that the tourist guide will guide you he or she will take you to places explain everything that is to be explained and finally the tourist guide will bring you to the safest place where you belong that should be our life too christians should be the laziest people ever spiritually because our tourist guide is jesus christ he is the way the truth and the life so throw all your troubles on him throw all your concerns and cares on jesus it is not a fantasy it is not imagination it is not a nice story it all depends on us how in faith we can throw ourselves in the hands of our savior jesus christ that requires faith that requires conviction and that requires courage and finally jesus says the one who has seen me has seen the father and there philip says show us the father jesus clearly says have you been with me so long philip the one who has seen me has seen the father we can see the face of jesus and we can see the father this morning someone came to me and asked me a question father in the old testament god was very violent but in the new testament he became a nice god and i said from where did you get this idea you know i read all the whole testament he was warring he was killing people in the new testament through jesus christ he has shown us that he has changed no god has not changed himself at all the holy scriptures were written by human beings of course under the guidance of the holy spirit god never changes god is the same but then one thing that has changed god has shown his real nature in the person of jesus 
whenever we are with our family members in our society in our neighborhood dear friends we need to look at jesus and learn the lessons of life from jesus look at him how kind gentle meek generous outgoing walking with all types of people sinners and saints alike he never rejected anyone he embraced the whole humanity and that is the face of the father we see in jesus and ultimately through this gospel passage dear friends we are all invited to become the light of the world if jesus is the way the truth and the life we are called to show that we are the light of the world because deep within our heart we experience the power of christ we should be motivated we must have that inspiration coming from jesus so that we can also be a guide and light and way to those people who are groping in darkness in our society so spirituality and uh, our relationship with god is not to save myself i should be another light i should be the salt of the earth to give taste to people who are around me and that should be our mission today therefore dear friends during this holy eucharist let us ask the lord to inspire us to guide us and strengthen us so that we may accept jesus as our way truth and life kindly rise with professor faith